man, all through the, uh, the, the weeks and months building up to camp, and I told Brother Starr, he's done a great job, kept me informed, gave me the information I need, took care of me, sent me a preaching schedule, just anything and everything. He thought of it, he got it to me, and uh, I sure appreciate him. And everybody on this team, because listen, this doesn't happen without a team effort. Right. Yeah. And, uh, if you've been in youth work any amount of time at all, you can walk onto a property and, and with a, a learned eye mm -hmm. look around and understand that there has been hundreds of hours, I'm not young people, hundreds of hours <laughs> behind the scenes from the people involved setting this thing up and getting it ready to go. And uh, uh, all I can say to every one of you, every one of you, most of you, did all of that work behind the scenes, uh, way far away from the spotlight. But I promise you this, great will be your reward in heaven. Amen. And, and every single good thing that's done in this camp this this week, uh, you're going to receive some of the reward of that, a recognition of that, one of these days when we stand before the Lord. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, praise the Lord. I, I'm excited to be invited here. And, and I do thank Brother Eric. He, he shows up and he hands me the key to his motorcycle. And I said, well, do you need to no, know? This is your key. He brought an extra key so that I have it all week long. And brother, I'm telling you what. I went and I, I just took a, come down here to the end and the stop sign, I took a left. And then I did the best I could to get lost. I mean, it was a goal, and it wasn't that hard, because the roads just are crazy around here. And uh, then I got into a detour, and I was on this back road, and I thought, I began to panic a little, and I'm like, well, well what if I can't find my way back? And then all of a sudden, I thought, well, what if I can't find my way back? I might just have to ride out here for hours and hours. Unfortunately, you can see I made it back. So, man, I had a good time. That's like therapy, brother. Uh, you never, come on, you've never seen a motorcycle parked in front of a psychiatrist office. <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. Prove the point. There you go. Amen. You got one of them, you don't need a psychiatrist. You may need a surgeon, but you. <laughs> I got nurses. And when I got my motorcycle, I have nurses and they come to my church. And boy, they were mad. They were mad at me. And they said, you know what we call those in the emergency room? And I'm like, no. They said, we call them donor cycles. <laughs> I said, it is appointed on the man wants to die. And then comes the judgment. It's appointed. If I'm supposed to go out, you know, meeting a semi on a motorcycle at 80 miles an hour, I mean, uh, 55 miles an hour. <laughs> it's the will of God. I mean, it's the will of God. We're all in these hands. Don't worry about that. Stop stressing, okay? And, uh, man, a lot. I think when we get to heaven, we're going to say, why did we fight so hard to stay down here? <laughs> so, anyway, uh, praise the Lord. Good, good. I need to say thank you. I need to say thank you, Brother Todd. I want to thank Brother Eric. I want to thank Brother Dave. I don't know if he's here or not. Brother Dave Wilbur, is that his last name? He came and picked me up at the airport. And we had a blast, man. That guy is certifiable. He, he is certifiable, man. He has the greatest sense of humor and the most amazing one-liners. And uh, all we did was just drive, and I just laughed, man. And uh, he's just so uniquely him. And uh, what a blessing that is. You, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you're uniquely you too. What are you laughing about over there? So, <laughs> uh, lay the groundwork. I'm nervous again. Because I don't know if I'm going to make any sense tonight. It's one of those messages. I said, uh, Brother Starr, I think God's just toying with me. He's just, he just playing with me this week. He's giving me messages to preach that I'm scared to death of, you know, because I'm not comfortable with them yet. And I don't really know how it's going to go. And honestly, I think God, I think God's just like looking at one of the angels and saying, watch this, I'm going to mess with Ross. <laughs> I'm just going to mess with him tonight. I'm going to put him out there on the limb and see if he'll, uh, <laughs> if he'll trust me enough to get to the end of this thing. So, anyway, uh, Brother Starr wanted me to mention some of my books. Um, we wrote the, let me say this first of all. I wrote this, uh, oh, my goodness sakes. If I didn't know the amount of work that went into this, I'd never done it. But then I was so far into it, I had to finish it. This is 104 clue Bible lessons and uh, several different series. And uh, this is two years' worth. If you're in youth ministry, 
Uh, you can get this, and you want to, you know, you play video games, you don't have to study for two years. It, it'd be great. You could be the normal youth pastor. I mean, youth pastors don't study anyway, but, but at least you'll be speaking and you'll have some Bible. Amen. But these uh, team lessons, uh, honestly, are, are, are so helpful, and, and they're, they're targeting issues that teenagers are facing today. And Bible, 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 I promise you, is full of the Word of God. So I just got a couple of these, if that's of interest to you. And then this was Volume 1, and I keep thinking, okay, do I do Volume 2? And I've decided to put that on hold. I'm going to do a 10-book series now, and I've just got two done. One more that's ready to go to publisher, and one more that's almost done. But it's called The Teenager's Guide to. And I pick a subject. This is the, the first one that came out. The Teenager's Guide to Character, Success, and Happiness. And uh, again, you can, as a leader, you can pick this up and you can teach these lessons. As a young person, oh, I wish I could get you to read. Thank you, Brother Star, for what you're doing in your church, what you're doing with your teenagers, challenging them to read, get them in the books. Uh, but you know what? It shouldn't be an adult pushing them in this area. Uh, I promise you, if you'll decide and discipline yourself to read, read good material, you're going to put yourself light years ahead of all of your peers. And I'm not exaggerating about that. It will pay off, pay off. And this is the Teenager's Guide to the Invisible Creation. And, oh, I love writing this. You know that there's a visible creation, but I'm sorry, Teenager's Guide to the Invisible Creation. You know there's a, a visible creation, but the same God that made the visible creation visible. made the invisible creation. By the way, the invisible creation is just as real as the visible creation. We just can't see it. And, and I'm going to take. A, I'm going to stick my neck out here. The most important things in life are the things you cannot see, not the things that you can see. You say, wait a minute. People are important. You don't see them. You just see the vessel that's carrying them. How about that? I mean, the most important things are not things that we can see. And God made it that way on purpose because that's why we the just must live by faith. We're to live by faith. And you know what? If we live. Like we really believe that the invisible was as real as the visible, it would absolutely change our life. And so I've taken a chapter or two on each aspect of the invisible creation. I had a lot of fun not only uh, writing this, but teaching this to our own people. Uh, even though these are written to teenagers, almost all of these series, both in the 104 and these books, I preached and taught to our general uh, congregation, adults and everyone, and... Uh, Anyway, it'll, it'll hopefully be good material for you. And there's some other things back there. A uh, book I just brought that you didn't have before, and this is for some of you adults that are here. And by the way, ladies, I want you to listen to what the Spirit will tell you because we need ladies involved in this. I wrote a book entitled, Did God Put a Book Inside of You? We need independent, fundamental, Baptist people writing. We need them writing, okay? We're looking at our young preachers and say, stop reading after the evangelicals and stop reading after the progressives and stop reading after. Well, you know what? They're turning around looking at us and saying, well, then give us something to read. And, you know, we're critical of what they're reading, which they shouldn't be reading that stuff. But at the same time, I, I mean, we need, I, I'm not exaggerating, I mean, tomorrow we need a thousand independent fun mode bats, men and ladies, to decide that this is going to be something that you're going to begin to do, take seriously, learn how to do because uh, we are starved in our circles for good Bible-based books and material. Uh, and so anyway, if you're interested in that, I think I have a handful of those books back there too.